It's our pleasure to welcome everyone to the TaroWorks Feature Deep Dive. My name is Irani and with me is Daryl, who will be leading this session. Today's topic is field mapping and task mapping. Daryl shall be demonstrating how to set up field mapping for different scenarios, including creating new records, updating records, and referencing records in parent-child objects. Please keep the feedback coming for these deep dives by sharing your ideas with customer success or submitting a support ticket with any ideas or requests. Before I hand it over to my colleague, Daryl, I'll go through a few housekeeping rules. This session will be recorded and will be shared in our website and in our YouTube channel for reference, just in case your colleagues couldn't make it uh, today. Everyone is mute by default, but if you have any questions at any point in the presentation, please type it into the chat. We will try to pause it and get it answered. If you prefer to ask your question, just raise your hand and I will mute you. Feel free to introduce yourself to the community when asking your question. Daryl, please take over. Thank you, Rani. Hi, everyone. It's uh, exciting to have you all in today's deep dive uh, session, uh, which is about field mapping and task mapping. So the agenda for today, we'll be looking at uh, a little bit of introduction of what field mapping is and task mapping is, and then we'll go into uh, a few demos here about uh, creating new records, updating new, updating some records, and referencing parent and child objects. At the end of the demos, we'll have a question and answer session where we'll be looking at some of the questions that you may have for us uh, in the chat section. So, looking at the introduction, uh, what is field mapping? Field mapping is when you specify which fields in a Salesforce object will store the data in the answers to the questions in a Tarawax form. Field mapping is vital because it helps us to pass the data that is collected by a Tarawax form into the fields in an object in Salesforce upon a successful sync and when a job is completed. This uh, enables updating the records that are existing in Salesforce, as well as creating new records in those uh, specified objects. Without field mapping, the data is reported, but it will remain in the answers object. And this may mean that the records will not be created, uh, nor updated, and also your reports will not be updated. So field mapping is quite critical. Task mapping, on the other hand, is when you specify which questions on the form will display data from the fields in records in Salesforce. After you've set up a drill down hierarchy to pull data from Salesforce so that that data can be mapped on the form. So by using task mapping, we are basically passing data that already sits in Salesforce and we want it to be visible in the forms for one or the other reason. Uh, one of those reasons is usually if you want to reference some unique IDs and you want to, these IDs are in Salesforce, so you want to have those IDs on your form, you would use task mapping. In some cases, you may also want to refer to records that are in Salesforce so that you know what are the current values in Salesforce before I do an update. So that's where task mapping comes in. So we'll switch into the demo uh, shortly. And we are looking at creating new records. In our demos, we are going to use a fictitious company called Aquatic, which is basically a company that builds websites to provide clean water to communities in a region uh, that has got a few cities. 
So looking at our Salesforce code, we have some websites. And these websites are in given regions like Amber City East and Amber City West. And then we have website members who uh, go to these websites. So for the demo, for the sake of the demo, we have that some test data there. And then uh, we have our jobs and forms that we are going to look at today. So we'll start by looking at the forms. And we are looking at a form that enables us to create a record. And we're just going to look at how do we set up the field mapping for this form. So the form we're going to look at is the website members registration form. And I'll click on the pencil icon here so that we can have a look at this form. From this form, we'll go to the question builder tab so that we can see the questions on the form. And we can see that we have a members information section. This is a repeat section, enabling us to capture more than one record uh, if need be. So we are capturing the first name, last name, national ID, phone number, and GPS uh, location for this well member, a website member. The part we are going to dwell uh, in today's demos is the field mapping. And in the mapping tab, we have some instructions at the very top about field mapping. So a little bit of information on what field mapping is, and then some basic steps on how to set up your field mapping, as well as some basic uh, tips and reminders that you need to consider when doing field mapping. So if you need a refresher on what field mapping does, you can make reference to this. Below that, we have a section for selecting objects and fields. And without uh, the object appearing here, this is how it would look like. So we have this option here to add the object to the form. And then below that, we have the submission data. So submission data is what the this form entails or comes with without really uh, adding the other forms, uh, the other questions. So submission data is about the, the data be behind the scenes, about the form, the form version, the submission information, and the person who is carrying out the task. That will be the mobile user. Under the members information, we have our questions that we created on our form, first name, last name, national ID, phone number, and GPS location. So let's go ahead and add an object. So our object is website member. And in this drop down menu, when you just type in, when you start typing in the name of your object, then it will be taken through at least uh, those objects that you want to work with. So we are working with a website member. As soon as I add that object, there is a column, there is a row here that is added automatically. Uh, for now, we'll skip it, but we'll review it later in the next demos. What I want to capture from this submission data as part of mapping, I want to know who collected this information, who collected the information about this website member. So I'll map the mobile user to a field on that record. And my field is called field operations officer. And then I'll map first name, last name, national ID, phone number, and GPS to the fields in the object that are compatible to these questions. We have an article that helps you to see the compatibility of questions in Tarot forms and in the fields in Salesforce. We'll be sharing that link in the chat with you. So for the first name, we'll map it to the first name uh, field. 
last name question will be mapped to the last name field national id to national id phone number to phone number and gps location to gps location as i'm picking these values you will realize that there are questions that when i click on the drop down menu more questions will more fields will appear uh, against certain questions that is because some of these fields are text areas and text area fields are compatible with many questions but for example gps location is quite limiting in terms of uh, compatibility and can only be li linked to i uh, can only be mapped to a gps uh, question a geo question so we'll go ahead and save our form after saving our form we have to make sure that it is published so that it can be used on the job so we publish our form and now let's look at the job that is linked to this form for registering our well site members and the job is uh, number one well site member registration if we look at this job so i'll just clone the job so that we can see what uh, how it has been built so for this job uh, it's a very basic job uh, we don't have any drill down hierarchy and we'll be coming to the drill down hierarchies in the next demos what we have is a task which is a collect data task so if we open this task, you can see that uh, that is our task, the title of our task, and the form that we linked it to is the form number one, well site members registration form. So we'll just click on cancel and cancel. There's no task mapping uh, done here. So we'll just click on cancel and now switch our hats and uh, check this on the mobile app how that form works so on the mobile app we have to make sure that we've synced our mobile app to have the latest jobs and forms as well as the latest data from salesforce so once that is done we'll go ahead to the jobs and complete job number one well site member registration we'll go straight to new job and then well site member registration and we'll fill the first name so we can say this is john um, say john johnny the id number for this member is 001 phone number is plus 1 three four five six and then the gps location we'll just capture that so our information has been collected so once the information has been collected go next and we can choose to either add a new member or continue with this member as i mentioned our form allows us to capture more than one uh, website member during the registration. So we'll just continue with this one member. So the job is complete, the market is complete, and click on sync. So as we wait for the sync to complete, we can now check in Salesforce if we have a record for um, John Johnny. So let us check our website members if we have the new member. And we can see that John Johnny is here. And the information we captured from this member, the national ID 001, the field operations officer uh, is the user that uh, was signed into the mobile device and the phone number is captured as well as the gps location so that is how you create you build a form 
and do a mapping, field mapping to create a new record in Salesforce. Uh, Irani, do we have any questions in the chat now? Or continue to the next part? Not for now. I think we can continue. Thank you. Thank you. So the next part uh, of the demo, we are going to see how we build a referencing parent and child objects uh, job. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to be able to create a visit, a website member visit record for a given website member. So let's go ahead and look at the job that will be uh, the form and job that will be used for this uh, task. So when we go to the forms, the form we want to look at is form number two, record website member visits. So again, I'll click on edit so that we can see how the form has been set up. And under the question builder, we can see that we have a section here for website member information and we want to see the website, that is the name of the website for this uh, member. And then we want to see the name of this website member. We want to capture the website member ID. We want to capture their national ID as well for reference. So all these questions, we want to store information in these fields. We don't want to put manually uh, capture this data. We want this data to come from Salesforce because this is an existing member, website member in Salesforce. And we just want to create a website member visit for this member. So all these, these questions here should have information from Salesforce. Down below that, we have the website member visit details. And so this is the information that we are capturing uh, afresh from the field. We have, uh, that we have the visit date, uh, number of sick days, number of visits to well, and issues at the website. So if we go to the field mapping, and we look at how the objects have been set up, you'll see that we now have two columns uh, in, this in this form. So the first column here is the website member column. And the second uh, column has got the website member visit object. Okay. So what we are doing here, we are saying the website member has got a website member visit. It is sort of a one to many relationships. So this website member may have one or many website visits. So this website member object is a reference object. We are not creating a record under this object. We are only reading from this object. And the value we are reading from this object, the specific value or the most crucial value we are reading from this object is the member ID. So the member ID is the unique identifier that we will be using to reference to that specific member that we want to create a website member visit for. So I'll just go ahead and remove this so that we can see how the form would look like before and after. So I'll go ahead and just add my two columns. So by clicking the add button presented with those columns, then I can select the object. So I want to select here with the website member object. And then go ahead and select the website member visit object. Once I've selected the child uh, object, 
I'll mark this first object as a reference object, and then I'll come and set a relationship. So um, earlier on, I had mentioned about these rows that get added here. They're being added automatically, we select the objects. And the first row will always represent the first column. Then the second row will represent the second uh, column. And it goes on and on. The more the columns you add, the more the rows you'll have. So from here, we can say that for this website member visit, we can set up a relationship from here that will point to the website member. And the relationship here is a master detailed relationship. So website member is a master record and the detailed record is the website member visit. So once that is done, we'll scroll down and specify the unique identifier for our website member. And that unique identifier will be our website member ID. That is the field that we've uh, we've created to uniquely identify our website members. So once I select the member ID, this column will be grayed out because this is a reference object and we are not creating uh, records under this object. Then we can go ahead and map the rest under the website member visit object. So we have the visit date, number of days, Uh, number of visits to the well and issues. So these are the fields that we have in the object well site member visit. So once that is done, we can save our form. Then we'll go to the forms tab and publish our form. Now that our form is published, let's look at the jobs. Let's look at the job uh, that will be used to record the well site member visits, job number two. And I'll just clone it so that we can look at how the job is set up. So looking at this job, you'll see that we've introduced what we call drill down hierarchy. And this drill down hierarchy feature enables us to pull data that is sitting in records in Salesforce objects. So we want this data to be able to, or to be available to be passed to their form. So drill down hierarchy helps us to pull this data from Salesforce. And the objects we are pulling the data from are region and we'll be seeing the region name from that uh, screen. And then we'll, from the website, we'll be pulling across the website name and the well number. And then for the website member, we are pulling the full name, member ID, and national ID. And after that, we look at our task. And the task here is a collect data task, again, we are mapping this job to the second, the form number two, record well site member visits form. And here is where we do our task mapping. So this mapping is taking place under a task. That's why we call it task mapping. And what we are doing is we are specifying the objects that we specified in the, we are pulling the objects that we specified in the drill down hierarchy. And for each object that we specified in the drill down hierarchy, we are again pulling the fields that we outlined in the drill down hierarchy. And we pass the values from those fields onto the form. So our first um, object, we are pulling the well site. So we'll select well site. And then what we want to capture is the well site name. So we have the option of picking either well site name or well site number, but we want the well site name to go to question number one, which is well site. And then from the well site member object, 
we are pulling the name and we want this to go to the well site member name member id to go to the well site member id question national id to go to the fourth question which is national id so that is how you do task mapping and task mapping is helping us to automatically capture the unique ids for the unique id for the record we want to reference as well as any existing information that we may use to uh, check and confirm that we're working with the right records and post that information onto the form so that it's visible for the mobile user. So I'll click cancel and go to our mobile device and perform a sync so that we have the latest information on the mobile device for us to carry out the job. All right, so our sync is done. We go to the jobs and we want to complete job number two. Record website member visit. So we'll go straight to a new job. And then our task is to record a website member visit. I'll select uh, Ember City West. So here is where our drill down comes in. We first have to select the region and just make it wider. So here we can see that the first level of the drill down or the first object in the drill down is region and therefore the re records that will be listed here are the regions that we want to select. So I'll select Amber City West and then the next level is the well site. So where the well site that these uh, members uh, go to. So we'll select Ember City West number three as our well site. And from there, uh, we can see that we have this well site member uh, with the name uh, 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 uh. So once we select that, we can see the full name uh, like that and the member ID and the national ID for this member. So when we go next, we can confirm the well site uh, member information here. That is their well site, their name, full name, their national ID, and we can proceed and create a record for them. So let's say the date of visiting is today, number of sick days, maybe two sick days, and number of times of visits to the well, uh, you can say 21, and Issues at the well site, we can say uh, broken, something like a broken, or faulty uh, water pump. Then we complete our job and mark it as complete. So once we mark it as complete, we can think so that we see how that child record. Uh, which is a member well site visit is created for that specific well site member. So again, we'll go to Salesforce and check our well site members. And the well site member we, who had a visit was AAA. And if we go to the related list, we can see that there is a visit that was created. So we have visit number 23. The issue was a faulty water pump. This well site member has visited the well 21 times so in 21 days and had uh, two days uh, sick. So that is how you create a form and do field mapping referencing a parent object on a detail, um, a master object on a detail object and being able to link those two records. And then you go ahead and do a task mapping so that the values in Salesforce uh, are passed onto the record that you are creating. 
Irani, do we have any questions in the chat? Yeah, we have a question from Sophia. Um, she's asking that well, she noticed that when mapping some sections show the required fields and others not. What was the logic mm -hmm. behind that? Right. So whenever you are doing your field mapping, there are questions that will be marked as required. These are mainly questions that are used as reference. Uh, so whenever you do a mapping and you pick an ID, a unique ID, then that question will automatically be marked as required. So that means that question on your will be required even if you've not marked it as required. And, and therefore it means you have to pass a value through task mapping or the user will be forced to enter a value. Uh, the reason it is marked as a required question is because if left blank, then the app will not be able to know the master record for the child record. In some other scenarios, a question will be marked as required if the field in Salesforce is required. So if, if when uh, the field is created on the object is marked as required, then when you map a question to that field, that question will also be marked as required so that uh, a blank value will, that the question will not have a blank value. Otherwise, uh, it will fail. Thank you, Darren. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Not for now. Right. So our last demo is updating records. And for this uh, demo, we'll be looking at our member who has this name. Uh, uh, uh. So let's see how we build a form to update this record. So we'll go to the forms. And then the form we want to look at is WellSite members update form. So let's click on editing the form, the pencil icon, and look at the questions under the question builder. So here we can see um, we have some information about the well uh, well site that is just the well number. So this will help us to reference the well number, the, uh, sorry, the well site for this member. You may ask why. Uh, it's because in some cases, you will have a master detailed relationship where, um, and, and in such a relationship, which is not a lookup relationship, the master record is a required field. So in that case, you must have a well number for you to update a detail, uh, a record that is a detail of the master record. And then below that, we have the members information. Uh, and this is basically now the information that we want to see about the member, as well as uh, make reference and update. So we have the region. The region will tell us which region this member belongs to, their well site, and then the member ID will help us to uh, identify and update the correct uh, well site member, then the full name will help us know what is the current name and first name will help us to capture the updated first name, last name will help us update the last name, old phone number will show us the current phone number in the system and phone number will be mapped to the phone number field to update this phone number. So if we go to field mapping, Again, we have our master record, which is the well site, which we are re referencing because of the relationship between the well site and the member. 
we don't want the member to miss a well site. And then under the well, a well site member, we, we are going to map the fields that are going to make the updates. Something to note here. So the well number, as we saw previously, um, this is picked automatically when you pick the uh, unique identifier for the master record. Back at the top, under the well site member, we have the member ID. We have to specify the member ID here because we want to update this record. If we leave this field blank, then duplicate values will be created. So we have to specify the ID from the member uh, record that will help us to know the exact member that we, we are updating. So this is where we set up the relationship. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, remove the mapping and then we can set it up afresh. So let's add our columns and objects. The master object here is well site. And the detailed record here is well site member. So once we add them, the ID fields are blank. So for the well site, I'll go down and check the well number here. We want it to be the unique identifier. So I'll pick well number here. So once I've, once I've picked it as the unique identifier, then this field or this question will become a required question, meaning it can't be blank. And then I'll mark it as, as a reference object, sorry. So first we have to mark it as a reference object and then select the well number. And then that will be grayed out. Next, we come here and we set up the relationship so that our website member is linked to that website. And then we can go ahead and do our mapping. So we are not mapping the region, the, the website, and the member, I, uh, the, and, sorry, the, well, the region and website. We'll skip these two questions. However, we will map our member ID because this is the unique identifier for our member. And then we'll skip full name and we will map first name. We are skipping full name because this is uh, a value that we don't want to pass to Salesforce. But this question will store the value of the full name that is from Salesforce. Last name, we'll map it to last name. Or phone number, we'll skip that and map phone number to phone number. So once we've mapped the fields that we want, uh, would like to update in Salesforce, we can go back at the top and confirm that member ID is selected here after we selected it as the unique identifier on the member object. So once that is done, we can click on Save and publish the form. So once the form is published, we can look at the job. And that is job number three. So I just clone it and look at how we, the job is set up in the back end. So this is our job. Again, we are using the drill down hierarchy to pull the records from Salesforce and give us the details in the specific fields, region name, well site name, that uh, well site name and well number coming from the well site, member ID, full name and phone number, which we are going to pass to the form are coming from the well site member object or record. So under the task, we've done our task mapping. And the task mapping is basically, we want to see the website 
number linked to question number one the region linked to question number two so we want to see the value in the region name in question number two website name uh, passed to question number three member id which is our unique id for the member we are going to update will be passed to question number four then full name question number five and phone number in the old phone number question so i'll cancel and then we can look at the job on the mobile device so once our sync is complete we can go to the jobs and the job is job number three website members update we'll go to the new job and complete this task so let's just confirm that our member is in a, the in the correct region so we are looking for the member with double a double a so this member is in ember city west so we'll go ahead and select ember city west as our region and this is the website in ember city west and we can see that this is the member we want to update so let's go ahead and do that so for the first name we can call this member Han. Last name as Hannah. And then the old phone number is 11. We can say this is plus 2387. Something like that. So we've updated the phone number. We've updated the first name and the last name. So Let's go ahead and mark it as complete. So we, we expect the record to be updated after the sync. So this is our record. Let's refresh the page and see if the changes have gotten to Salesforce and updated the record. Great. Now we can see that the first name is updated, last name is updated, and therefore the full name is also updated. And the phone number is also updated from 11 to plus 23 and the rest of the digits. So that is how you set up a job to update an existing record um, where you do a field mapping with the record ID in the ID field. Do you have any questions, Irani? Not for now. We can continue. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. So let's look at some of the best practices when uh, doing field mapping and task mapping. When you're doing field mapping, please use ID values that are unique. Uh, and these are fields that are either auto number or external ID fields, which are usually text fields, but with the option of no duplicates and unique as checked. We also recommend that when you're doing field mapping, start with the parent object and then start with the parent object first in the first column and then pick the child object of that respective parent record second. And you can do that with as many references as you, you may have in your scenario. The reason we recommend this approach is to make it easy to know which columns align to which rows, and therefore it makes it easier for you to know uh, the unique reference IDs that you are passing across. And then make use of uh, our compatibility uh, page or uh, link which tells you which fields are compatible to which question types on Tarot's form so that you don't have a scenario where uh, you, you are struggling to find the correct field to map to only to find out that it's not 
uh, the, the field type is not compatible with the question type. When you are doing the task mapping, try as much as possible to match the question, the flow of the questions on the form when you are designing your drill down hierarchy fields and the task mapping fields. What I mean is if you have question one capturing the region, question two capturing the well site, question three capturing the well site member, try to have the drill down hierarchy in that order and also the task mapping in that order so that you are not confused and pass the wrong values into those fields because when you pass the wrong values into the, those questions then you may have errors uh, when you try to sync. Some limitations around field, uh, field mapping and task mapping. All the required fields in the object must be mapped and if they are not mapped then uh, the form will not the mobile user will have to enter a value so you you can't you can't skip those fields even if you wanted to skip them for this if you feel like some fields will not will, will have to be skipped then it's advisable that in salesforce when you're creating that field just mark it as not required or leave that required checkbox unchecked the other limitation is when using pick list and multi pick list uh, fields in Salesforce, make sure that the values in those fields in Salesforce match with the values that you have in your single select and multi select questions on the Tarot form. Any difference in values will uh, result to an error. When you're working with the task mapping and drill down hierarchy, the checkbox and email uh, fields cannot be mapped. So you'll have to find ways of mapping these fields or passing these fields. For example, using formula fields to store the email address uh, or using um, some automation to mark a, a, a custom field to either mark it as false or uh, true, like a pick list field to represent false and true in a checkbox. When you're setting up the uh, cross-reference of a master detail, a master detail uh, setup, that is a master record and a detailed record in a job, and then you have a repeat section in that job, in that form, sorry. So the, for the object, that is in the repeat section, it can only be mapped in one repeat section. An object can only be mapped in one repeat section. If you need to map the object in different repeat sec sections, then you will have to add another column, another extra column for that object. And for this, I'll just try to do a demo. So let's say, for example, you, you have a repeat section in one of the forms and the form we like to use is this update member so what we're saying is this form has a repeat section this section here member information section is a repeat section so if we are to map these questions uh, repeated in another section, in another repeat section, then we will have to add another column for this member site, well, well site member, so that the questions can now be populated in that repeat section. So a repeat section will just be a similar section like this one, but in the next um, like an addition section uh, below here. So for that mapping, for this mapping to have a similar mapping in the repeat section, then you must have an extra column for the same object. For more, if you have any further questions on this, uh, you can always reach us and uh, we can guide you. Daryl, I think we have a question from Chimango. 
Yes. He's asking, in the field mapping between a child and parent object, what if you don't click on the checkbox that reads reference object and simply set the relationship between the object? Are there any implications doing that? Yes. So if you don't mark an object as a reference uh, record, then that means that that record, the, the record for that object will be created. So you'll be creating two records. The record in the master object, as well as the record in the detail object or the child object. So it is important if you don't want to create multiple records in the parent object, then you have to mark it as referenced. If uh, you want to create a parent record and a child record, then you can leave that as reference checkbox unchecked. Yeah, does that answer your question, Chimango? Right. So that brings us to the end of the demo. And yeah, we can continue with the questions if there are any. Yeah, thank you so much, Daryl, for all this explanation. I think we don't have more questions, but remember, if you have any inquiry, question, uh, suggestion, please um, let us know via ticket or get in touch with your customer success manager to raise this. Awesome. So remember, the, um, the recording from this session will be shared in our YouTube channel for reference. It has been a pleasure hosting you in our TattleWorks Deep Dive. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you all for joining and see you in the next TattleWorks webinar.